This morning, I'm following up on a report by the CDC, which shows nearly three out of every five teen girls in the U.S. felt sad, even hopeless in 2021. That number is double the number of boys who reported feeling the same way. And we're seeing that trend locally as well. Spectrum Health's CARES team provides support to families with kids and teens in crisis. Well, last year in Erie County, 805 of their referrals were for young girls. So far this year, they've already gotten 183 referrals for girls. That is a 10% increase only 10 weeks into the year. So why are girls more likely to feel this way than boys? And what can parents and schools do to help? I got an inside look at one program that's working to get teens talking. What color? Oh, I choose the color. Inside Lakeshore High School. Blue. What looks like a spirited yes. game of Uno between friends. Uno. Uno out. Is actually a mental health check-in. That's how you get the kids like to talk. If they're feeling shy or something, you just distract them with something else and then you learn about them as you play. 15 year old Catherine and her mentor, Buff State student Delaney, catch up during study halls and lunch periods. Red, come on girl. This is school-based mentoring, a program designed by Compere Buffalo. It's really just supporting mental health through basic friendship. It's talking about just their day, and what's going on in their life. It's made a tremendous impact. For students like Catherine, who have a lot going on. Wake up every day at like six in the morning, go to school, and then you go home, do schoolwork, and then like dance three days a week, and then Girl Scouts. It's a place they can focus and just slow down. A lot of kids like this come to school, and they're always like either like sad or like stressed over like schoolwork. That stress, the CDC says, leading about 60% of teenage girls to feel sad, even hopeless. Compere's director of youth services says it's happening in Western New York. As sad as it is, it didn't surprise me, because I think we're seeing that anecdotally every day in the schools. And no surprise, social media plays a role. That could be like a lot of like drama and stuff and like it could affect like people's lives like people like post like what happens in school and like different stuff and like then like everybody sees it then it causes like more problems just the sense of privacy the barrier has been broken down if something happens in school that like gets talked about after school Delaney says she's learned a teen who's acting out might just be struggling and wants parents to know they might need some extra help shift the perspective instead of thinking that they're they're giving you a hard time they're victimizing you just thinking they're having a hard time they're dealing with a lot right now which is why programs Ridiculous. like these how was dance last week gives students yeah. a place to be heard. It's like easier to talk to people here. I've heard some kids say, you know, I don't know where I would have been this year if I didn't have this friend to check in with. Red. So Compere Buffalo has been running this mentor program in schools for about six years. They partner with local colleges. So these mentors are either working on their bachelor's or their master's degrees. And right now they have this program in five Western New York school districts. The idea that they wouldn't know where they would be without having that friend says a lot about the state of mental health in these teenage girls. It's a safe place for them to go in schools where they can talk. They can connect with someone. They can work through some problems. Right. It's really important yeah. at least to have the conversation. Mm -hmm.